Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zonta of Repro Products. This screencast will showcase the tool palettes within AutoCAD 2017. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zonta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Autodesk AutoCAD 2017. If you take a look at the ribbon in the home tab of the ribbon under the palettes, you'll also notice there's a view tab as well and there's the command tool palette. If you click it and it's not highlighted, the command is not visible and the tool is not functional. If you click it and it is highlighted, it will display. It displays as a floating tool palette. You can resize it if you need to resize it by clicking and dragging on the corner or the bottom or right or top. You have the ability to click this icon to auto hide it. I'm going to leave it open for now. You can right click the vertical binding and say allow anchor to the left or right and docking as well. This is anchoring it to the left. If you need to dock it, you can left click and drag it until it sits into position like so. And now that that's docked, you can work with it. Um, <clears throat> you have the ability to left click here, hold it and drag it and pull it back out so it's floating. And the way the tool palette functions is you have a whole bunch of tabs. You have architecture, mechanical, so on and so forth. Depending on the AutoCAD application you're working with, whether it's AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture or AutoCAD MEP, so on and so forth, the tool palettes will have different types of tabs. You can right click the very bottom of that and you'll see that there are a whole bunch of other tabs that are available that just don't physically show right off the bat. And you can pick whatever you want and it will switch and show you that particular tab. The way this is set up is they have tabs inside are the commands. So for example, I can go to architecture. You'll see a whole bunch of icons and commands. Some icons have the lightning bolt symbol, which means it's um, intelligent and they're dynamic. There are some that don't have it, for example, here, and it's just a static tool. And to use any one of them, you can just left click and hold and drag and drop and it gets put into the drawing. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and move the tool palette over here a little bit. And you can see that this particular object came in. You can select it. And because it's intelligent and it's dynamic, it has a whole bunch of grips for you to work with. For example, flipping the direction of which way it swings and which way it hinges. <clears throat> it also gives you the ability to adjust in this particular one the opening angle of the doors. It gives you the ability to adjust what size thickness wall it's going to sit in on, as well as the size of the door. There are doors that are pre-made of different sizes, and it goes from 24 to 28 to 30, 32, 36, and they're pretty standard. And so let's take a little bit deeper look. If I right click any one of these commands within the tool palette, I can go to properties. What ends up happening is the tool properties window opens up and it describes how this tool actually functions. We can resize this if we need to. It gives you an image, which you can change if you need to change. Um, you can right click and say specify image and pick something else. <clears throat> it has a name which you can change. It has a description that you can change. It has the source file. The source file is basically an AutoCAD file that comes shipped with the software that's already in, automatically installed. These tools are tied to that particular file. And if you want to, you can peruse to that file, open it up, and you'll see all of these blocks already in there. And then, so this tool really is nothing more than just a pointer. And it points to that file, it points to that particular block, uh, dynamic block, and then allows it to be used. The scale is here that you can change, <clears throat> auxiliary scale as well, rotation, prompt for rotation and exploding, other features, color, layer, line type, plot style, so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, one tidbit when you work with, say, AutoCAD architecture and the doors in that particular tool palette, one of the additional features is the ability to specify, is it placed in the center of the wall, to the left of the wall, to the right of the wall, or to an offset from a corner, if you will. 
And so each one of these tools within the tool palette, you can right click and go to its properties and you can see the data and you can make any adjustments that you need to. If you need to make your own set of commands and your own tab within the tool palette, <clears throat> you can right click and you'll see it lists all of them here. If you right click the vertical binding on the left hand side, you can click and say new palette. And what ends up happening is it creates a new tab called new palette, call it whatever you want. And then you can start dragging and dropping objects such as blocks or lines, circles, so on and so forth into that space. And then you basically created it. Now again, because these tools are tied to a, an actual AutoCAD file, you have to know where's the AutoCAD file that you're putting it, um, the data that's inside that you're building clean. Remember its location because you're going to need that if you need to do, um, if you need to create this tool palette custom on every single workstation because you'll have to map it in the uh, options toolbar. <clears throat> so for here right now it says drawing two. If I try to drag and drop this door into here, it won't let me because it says I actually have to save that source file first. So I'm going to save this temporarily and we'll put it under the temp folder and I'll call it test file. Now that it's saved, I should be able to left click and hold and drag and drop this door into that tool palette and it does. Other things like I said you can do is you can draw a line, you can draw a rectangle, draw a circle, and the property information about these objects also carry across. So if I select that line, and I left click and hold and drag that over, it'll be the line command. If I select this circle, drag and drop this over, it'll become the circle command, and so on and so forth. So you can customize this tool palette <clears throat> and make your own tool palette tab, if you will, and any commands inside. And that's, let's see, well, let's see, one last thing, uh, docking, anchoring, and then transparency. Uh, if you want to, you can turn transparency on <clears throat> for that particular tool palette. And it allows you to specify how clear or how solid the opacity is. Um, and as you can see, it's a slider. So as I slide to the left towards clear, you start to be able to see through it. And then um, same thing when you're hovering and rolling over the palette, the opacity also can change. Now, if you are going to use transparency, it is a little graphic intensive on the graphics card. So just make sure your graphics card is a, is a good sanctioned one. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.